Hey y'all, it's Gina. So I am adding some vintage trim. This is the Bee in My Bonnet Lori Holt Vintage Trim. It's um, a rickrack. And so um, Kimberly likes for me to add it to her binding sometimes. And I'm gonna show you what I do. So I've already added one side so that you can see when I cut Kimberly's quilts are all quilts. I've started doing this long before I worked for Kimberly, um, but I trim my quilts after they've been quilted on the long arm. I trim them about a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the quilt. And I always do that with everything. And so once I trim it, then I add the rickrack right along the very edge. I just, I turn my, um, my stitch length to like a three, and then I just catch the very, very edge of the rickrack at the edge of the quilt and then I still leave that quarter of an inch and then what I'm going to do in a few minutes I'm going to I'm going to add the rickrack to all four sides and then I'm going to go back and attach the um, the binding you can do it all at one time I have done it all at one time where you hold the rickrack and the binding at the same time but I think it looks nicer when you do it you know do the rickrack and then the binding so I'm going to show you here how I do just a little bit of this and then I'm going to come back in a few minutes and show you how to uh, attach the binding. So I just take the rickrack, the vintage trim, and um, on the edges what I try to do is just make it look, I usually try to do something like that so that the edge of that one comes into the edge of the other one and then I'll trim off the excess. But because we're going to do it right on the edge, sometimes it's Sometimes it's hard to get it to, to nest just right. So um, we're gonna go with that right there. And then like I said, I have the stitch length at about a three. And then I just hold it on the very edge. And then stitch all the way down each side. And then I cut it each time because I feel like it's too hard to fold over on the on the corner. So I usually just leave it loose like that and then I go back and trim it and I'll show you that in a second. Um, so, super simple, adding it, just catching the very edge of each, each little, each little piece. So if you look, it's just very, barely catching the edge And this one's a pretty big quilt, and so when I have a larger quilt, I usually stick, I have a, um, and a TV tray, an old school TV tray that I put right here to the left of my machine so it kind of catches the bulk of the, of the quilt. I also do that if I'm doing, whoa. Oh, I don't know what I just did here. My thread got stuck. All right, I'm gonna fix that and I will be right back. Okay, I got my thread break all fixed and minor details. And we are almost to the end here. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So there we have it. Isn't it cute? All right, and so then we're gonna take the binding and we're gonna go right over that. And so this is the vintage trim. There's a bigger one and a smaller one. And so this is the large one. There's also some smaller ones, but Kimberly usually does the large ones. Um, but it looks super cute and it's really very easy. It's just an extra step, but it's not hard. Okay, so that's what it looks like there. And then I'm gonna get the um, 
binding and show you how to attach the binding. And again, um, I'm gonna go over just for a second here. So when I trim, I have people ask me all the time about how I trim my quilts. I always trim them after they're done quilting. I trim them about a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the, of the quilt, all the way around the quilt top. And so when you attach your binding here and then you fold it over to your back side to do your hand stitching, this part fills up your binding just perfectly and I really like the way that it feels. And so that's how I've always done it. And so um, if you're wondering how I do it, that's how. So I'm gonna grab the binding and then I'll show you that in just a sec. Okay, so we are ready to add our binding. I did also wanna let you know that the vintage, vintage trim comes in a small size and it's really small. It would be cute on like an apron or if you're working on some little girl clothes or that kind of thing, um, but probably not for this. So I did want to let you know because you are going to see um, two separate sizes on the Fat Quarter Shop website and the large one is the one that you're going to want to use for the binding. Okay, so now we have it on all four sides and what I do on my binding is I just simply lay it right on top. I put, it ed I put the edge of the binding, so my binding is a two and a half inch strip, folded in half and pressed. And then I just line it up exactly with the edge of the quilt and the rickrack. And then when we fold it over, I'm gonna do just a small piece to show you. And so I just, um, I just do still about, between an eighth of an inch and a quarter of an inch is what I usually stitch in from the side. Um, and I'm gonna show you. So, that is the space for the um where i put where i attach the binding and then it goes right over the top of the rickrack so that when you fold it over and you do your binding it folds right over and then matches with your other side your your seam on the other side and so then it's going to show that's what you'll see uh, from the front and so you're gonna add your binding on exactly the same way that you normally do. Still do your mitered corners the same. Everything is still pretty much the same. Is You just want to make sure that you try to get your, your um, vintage trim on there as straight as you can so that it doesn't look all wobbly. And then you know try to do your binding as straight as you can. But that is pretty much it. So we're just gonna add the binding and I'm gonna work on that.
Okay, so we are all finished adding our binding and you are going to have this amazing, super cute rickrack all into your, so into your binding. So when I do my binding, I take it over to the um, sewing or the iron right now and press it and I press it all open, push it out like this and just press it, press it, press it. And then that'll make your little miter corner. And then when you fold it over, just take it to the same, the same stitch line when you do your hand stitching and you'll just make your edge of your binding go directly to that stitch line. And then it will be nice and full and look super cute.